Hi, it's Saturday. Let's begin our day to day with St. Joseph with a prayer to Our Lady. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners. Now and at the hour of our death, amen. St. Joseph, guardian of the Redeemer and of Mary, pray for us. Hi, it's Father Barry, and it's Saturday, the 25th of September, day to day with St. Joseph. This is a continuation of yesterday's program, We're talking about Joseph and Mary and being used by God and fulfillment of prophecies like Ezekiel's, where a new beginning is happening for Israel. But it's because they are products of the exile, a man and woman of deep faith, and prepared by God for this special time now, where God will come and hear the cries of his people. What are those cries? Well, let's listen. In these exiles uh, come back to Israel, they remember the prayers of old, like the Psalms of David. They remember some of the struggles back then of the sickness of sin and the problems of faith that they had even in those greater times. Psalm 38 bears words of that. It says, O Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger. Do not punish me, Lord, in your rage. Your arrows have sunk deep in me. Your hand has come down upon me. Though your anger, or through your anger, all my body is sick. Through my sin, there is no health in my limbs. My guilt towers higher than my head. It is a weight too heavy to bear. My wounds are foul and festering, the result of my own folly. I am bowed and brought to my knees. I go mourning all the day long. These mournful prayers are repeated, are repeated in the exile's time. All my frame burns with fever, Psalm 38 continues, while my body is sick, spent and utterly crushed, I cry aloud in anguish of heart. The exiles are praying this way. They're saying, we've had so much sin. We've been so unfaithful to the Lord. We want to be the people that, that are repentant, that are, are the Lord's, that would be the people brought back to his heart. It says, I cry aloud in anguish of heart. I hear Mary and Joseph doing that in their pre-Jesus days as part of a Israel that wants the Lord and his promises to be fulfilled in them, if at all possible. O oh Lord, you know all my longing. My groans are not hidden from you. My heart throbs, my strength is spent, the very light is gone from my eyes. O oh Lord, do not forsake me, my God, do not stay far, far off. May Make haste and come to my help, O oh Lord, my God, my Savior. Psalm 38. And now we think of Ezekiel's prophecies, and we think of Jerusalem is built up, the walls are built up, the gates again, a rebuilt temple. Mary's a young woman in the temple before she meets Joseph, before she's the mother of the Messiah. Joseph is a faithful man in Israel from nearby Bethlehem, comes and worships a lot faithfully there, faithfully in Bethlehem, keeping the faith the best he can. Mary is so pure and put unto the world in a special way. And Ezekiel's prophecies then uh, start coming true. And he makes special plans for Joseph to come and wed that Eve and, and take care of this Messiah and give it as a gift uh, to Israel again. You know, I think on, um, uh, on September 25th, I was looking at some prayers for Mary uh, on, the, um, on the feast, just a Saturday, a Saturday mass. And I'm going to read this this prayer to you. And it's about the tree of life in the Garden of Eden. God remembers 
and now he he's bringing the mother of the living to us and Mary O mother of Almighty God forever blessed in all your ways give us your own tranquility and strength and comfort all our days you are a strong and lovely tree the fruit of which is purest gold whose branches spread to shelter us whose quiet leaves are peace unfold pray for us now and when we die that we may live and ever praise the father son and spirit blessed in endless light and timeless days in sirach 2417 it says i bud forth delights like the vine my blossoms become fruit fair and rich so the wisdom writer is speaking of the of the tree the olive tree budding forth again it's a tradition that the tree of life in the garden of eden was the olive tree in a mediterranean world of the bible its fruit provided food as well as oil for light heat and healing mary bore the one who is the light of the world and the healing of the nations and joseph cared for him and loved him was guardian for him and of mary and so the olive tree is growing forth again and hope is alive the book of sirach is written you know a few generations before joseph comes along or mary but it says what god is planning to do i have struck root among the glorious people in the portion of the lord his heritage like a cedar on lebanon i am raised aloft like a cypress on mount hermon like a palm tree in angedi like a rose bush in jericho like a fair olive tree in the field like a plane tree growing beside the water this image of the tree of life or trees bringing forth um the Lord's message he is coming and the tree of life um, will be in Jesus and Mary and Joseph will will lay a, a means that Jesus creates and uses for the recreation what Ezekiel saw in vision would come true in Jesus and through the help of Joseph and Mary. And of course, all the early stories of the Gospels and the apostles and disciples and the angelic help God employed and Jesus comes and he's savior, he's a deliverer. And this tree of life is what we celebrate now, you and I. We celebrate that the Lord is, says, I am the vine, I'm the life given to you and this tree of life we're taking you back to paradise to the garden of eden the father the spirit and i the son to give you life my special ones my sons and daughters those repentant those who want to love and serve me those who are mine i claim you as my own my prize you are my people again